Let's uh, line up the uh, the first match of tonight. Turnip Boy versus JY. Turnip Boy uh, coming first in Group C. Uh, Group C consisting of Alex Air, uh, Owak, better known as Tufty Indigo, and Human Kirby. He took that Group 3-0. Uh, one of two people to, to 3-0 his group. Uh, JY in a group with myself, uh, and managed to go undefeated in his group, uh, a two-win, one-tie record. Uh, but unfortunately, due to point differential, uh, was placed second uh, when it comes to tiebreakers. And so exits the group in second place, which means he draws a slightly uh, more difficult matchup uh, in theory. Yeah, a little bit, I would say. Turnip Boy, again, one of those top challengers. I believe the top seed in the challenger tournament just missed the auto-promote. There really were no easy or particularly difficult uh, matchups in the round of 16, but I guess very, very slightly harder than some of the others, slightly more horrific than some of the other opponents they could have had. Uh, It's going to be nothing but hard matchups in the round of eight if JY can get past it, though. I think you have to make JY at least a slight favorite going into this, though, based on experience alone. Yeah, and when it comes to uh, to challenge players from the the challenger division in SEL, Turnip Boy placed third in the regular season, uh, coming into the single elimination uh, challenger tournament, seated first, and currently is the favorite to win. Uh, currently battling out, had his semi finalist match uh, today against Plastics, and then uh, depending on results, would face Lazy Bear um, if he was to make it to the finals. Uh, but still first in that bracket. Uh, but this is not the SEL, uh, this is the Summer Cup, and here, this is what we focus on, because on Veranda, Turnip Boy will be sniping first, JY choosing to spy first as the second seed coming into this match. Yeah, an unusual choice. I don't want to make too much of it. I don't think it, uh, whether or not you spy or snipe first matters too much, but the majority of the time, people choose to snipe first, get that psychological edge, try to get a win in the bank right away, JY going the other way. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, seems to me that uh, whenever people kind of make this decision to uh, to spy first, it's all about getting that spy win out of the way so that you can almost tilt your opponent. If you get that really early spy win, then you're constantly playing from ahead uh, and, and your opponent is trying to play catch up. Uh, we'll have to see if we can do it. JY are going to be spying here as small men. If you're ready to go, I'll uh, count us into the game. We can get Absolutely. things underway on Veranda. Let's do it. Three, two, one, playing it. And there's small men shenanigans, hopefully, to come. Right off the bat, yeah. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Bit of a, a missed pad there, but in the early game, that's when you can really get away with those things. We pick up our flirt at 51%, and off we go to the uh, side window pad, presumably for a timeout. Now, usually, small man shenanigans means overt bugs or uh, cheeky purloins. It doesn't usually mean missed pads front and center, but as you say, time of chaos, easy to get away with, even right in front of the sniper's laser. That was a time ad. Uh, I believe it was a white test, but JY left before it was ready to be completed, uh, meaning that uh, a beep did incur. Uh, quickly shifts over towards the uh, statues, and it seems like Turnip Boy wasn't really aware of the beeping out of order. No, he was focused very intently on the ambassador who was at Red Bookshelf. Uh, also letting off some uh, lowlights, I noticed, for early statue visits potentially, at least in the case of Queen, or maybe because she didn't take the bug opportunity. Whatever it was, definitely early focus on the ambassador. Probably missed the time at as a result. It's a very fast completion of Inspect here for JY, clearly wanting to get that mission out of the way. And I really respect this decision, especially in a game one scenario where you kind of just rush Inspect and your opponent always will have that threat that you can complete. But chances are they're less suspicious that you are actually the spy. Yeah, if you go once in the middle of the game and then you take your second Inspect visit with a minute left, that looks very different to the sniper than when you get it out of the way early, especially with a character they're probably going to be suspicious of anyway. Much less downside to that early highlight when you play as someone like Smallman. We go bug path past the ambassador, and it is going to be a bug taken from the sniper cam. Smallman kind of just shipped through the gap. You can't see him due to the fact that the ambassador was pretty much as close to the conversation as he could be, so that's a free bug for JY. Yeah, and he gets a fingerprint here while simultaneously maybe losing a little bit of heat because it's his third statue visit. Although at this point, you're hoping the sniper is on the statue visits because otherwise they could think you're finishing. Yeah, no, that's very true. 
Back One of those rare times where you want the sniper to be on the ball. Yeah, absolutely. You want to trust that your opponent is seeing everything so that you can, uh, s I suppose, get that lowered suspicion. We finished our seduce. This is very quick. We're under a, a map with four minutes, and we've got three mission completions in the first two uh, minutes and 40 seconds. And right now, if you get a decent fingerprint, let's say a drink or a difficult, and you banana bread, it's just really hard to imagine you're going to die for that. You're forcing the sniper to make a very difficult shot that is usually not going to work. I mean, there's a, a print at the, the red bookshelf as well, I believe, potentially smudged now that our seduction target is standing there. Uh, but there is definitely opportunities for JY. And regardless, he has a minute and 40 seconds to find those opportunities. Double agent currently at the back of the veranda near the between the green and red bookshelf so we could look for that contact now and then just follow the ambassador around looking for a print yeah with this kind of lead and with this much time you actually might want the, the fingerprint to be smudged you're more likely to get away with it and you have time to try another one if you don't hit it there you go four missions done now we just need that print to complete our fifth Minute second, uh, minute left on the clock. Remember, JY did add time at the beginning. So uh, as far as the internal clock is concerned, we're reaching the final seconds of this game. I have to see how antsy Turnip Boy is to make a shot. And I believe the ambassador just rejected a drink. That's pretty significant. The fact that Turnip Boy hasn't shot yet either means he's really, really on that fingerprint, or more likely, he's just not that suspicious, and JY is actually very close to winning if the Ambassador will put that case down or otherwise put their hands on something. Another missed conversation, and this time right in front of the camera, but as JY turns in, Turnip Boy zooms in on the guest list, really worried a Perlo might be happening, and here it is, the last fingerprint in a briefcase, and when you look at Turnip Boy's camera, it's so difficult to see his small man. Mission win countdown ticking, Five seconds left, and JY will find the first spy victory of the series. Yeah, you can tell from the camera movement there that he just was not that suspicious to begin with. Even missing that pad, uh, and for anyone who's wondering, why does he do that when he already has the bug? Why make yourself look so suspicious? That's to crowd the ambassador, to invade their personal space and make them move. They could have left with the briefcase, but just around the time he crowded him, he put the briefcase down, ensuring that he would leave within 10 seconds and give him an opportunity to pick it up. Did not go very far, which was not ideal, but given how little suspicion he apparently had going into that endgame, uh, more than enough. Yeah, absolutely. Really fortunate stuff for JY because otherwise you're forced to be in a position where you're transferring that microfilm under the laser sniper or potentially even worse, purloining. Uh, which is something that Turner Boy was clearly looking for, had most of his attention into that mission. With an early spy win, JY finds the uh, the momentum that potentially you want when you do choose to spy first in a series. And now for Turner Boy, under the gun, has to try and equalize the series as spy. Going to be playing Rocker here, one of his favorites. Let's see how he plays it out. Three, two, one, playing it. Yeah, that decision to spy first looking pretty good. Now he just has to snipe for a 2 nothing lead. And even in the slightly longer kind of setup that you have in this round, uh, that's still pretty devastating. Yesterday's broadcast, uh, Veranda saw three sweeps uh, over all three games. Dowsey, uh, obviously myself, I swept Alex Air. Uh, we had Nanfless sweep Lazy Bear. And then, of course, uh, Bit Banding Pig swept up a lie on, on Veranda. It seems like this might be another case as well if JY can convert this sniper win. And it kind of shows potentially uh, the skill required to, uh, to snipe on Veranda against someone who's going to test your spy uh, or is going to have a testing spy. Absolutely. Banana bread. And JY, right, right off the bat, a lot of uh, statue visitors, but not highlighting for them. That was a lovely move there from Turnip Boy. Contact is fake. There is an SDA in our conversation, but so was the ambassador. I tap that booty, get the bug. Yeah, and it looks almost totally clean at this point. And bug really is generally the best mission on Veranda if you can get away with it. As we saw last game, it was really the only hard tell uh, that JY had to do. It's looking really strong from Turnip Boy. We've completed our seduce. Would you decide to go for a time ad? At the classical time ad window, let's see if Turnip Boy reacts to it. 45 seconds added to both our clocks here. No low lights coming out. Seems like the time ad may have been free. 
Maybe. I think there's a decent chance JY is actually on it and just waiting. As we always say, if you don't see any reaction from the sniper, it's either because they totally missed it or they totally caught it and they don't need to reflect it in their lights. Only wheels at windows when it happened. And the left side of the party, which is normally very busy, was basically empty. There was one low light at bookshelves. That's about it. So more reason than usual to notice who was on that far time, time, uh, time ad window, as you put it. Here comes a fingerprint for Turner Boy, as well as a set of inspects here. The time ad potentially unnecessary, especially if it does come back to bite us, as our mission progress was really good at the two and a half minute mark. We've reached it again after the, most of that time elapsing here. Fingerprint in specs gives us a lot of partial progress. With that, we could potentially finish with just a, another set of inspects, another fingerprint and a contact. And the question is, what order do you do them in? That matters quite a bit on this map. Oh, look at this, the ambassador accommodating. Yeah, absolutely. Another fingerprint, as you can see on the left side of the screen, as the ambassador picks up one of those falcons for us. Turnip Boy sees that whilst he sits in the conversation with the double agent and starts up the contact here. This is a real testament of whether or not JY saw the time ad, as you would feel when you see Rocco in the conversation with the double agent, it might be indication to shoot, but if no shot comes off here, then maybe Turnip Boy is undetected. And the ambassador picks up the adjacent statue to the one they just put on their fingerprint. That might actually be good uh, if you are not taking the latest statue that they touched. Uh, although uh, an SDA picks up the first one instead. A smudge fingerprint, difficult. Maybe worth to go for it. Ooh, safety off on Turnip Boy. It seems like potentially JY is more suspicious of Rocker than we did anticipate here. Turnip Boy is doing a good job of idling this one out. But potentially when he talks in just a second due to it being his turn, he would be shot, maybe not even, as it seems like he's gearing up to go towards that statue which, and pick up which that one? fingerprint. Which one? One of them is a clean fingerprint, the other is smudged. He has such a clear choice. This is such a great little controlled experiment of spy decision. There this clean statue is the choice. With the safety off just in conversation, I feel this is JY taking the shot regardless. And he does. Yep. Converts Veranda. Another sweep here. Taking it 2-0. Yeah, absolutely. I think JY probably seemed to get a lot of information out of the banana breads. I still think that time ad might have hurt Turnip Boy more than was originally evident. But whatever it was, uh, JY felt like they pulled that one back a little bit after a rough first half. Uh, but I just love that little controlled experiment there. Here are two statues. One is smudged, one isn't. Which are you willing to risk? Which is less suspicious? How suspicious do you think you are? Turnip Boy goes for the sure thing and takes a bullet. Yeah, and just watching back the, the sniper's movement of when that time ad did occur, uh, it did seem apparent that JY was pretty much setting up his camera to see who came out of that uh, window area after seeing uh, wheels at the front-facing window. So apparently uh, right over the, uh, the time ad as it happened. And really unfortunate for JY. Uh, Turn it, boy. Now down 0-2, but... Certainly not out of it. We've seen comebacks uh, come back from greater numbers than this. And on a map like any three of five pub, uh, certainly can be considered the great equalizer. Yeah, a very swingy map, for lack of a better phrase. Not quite balcony, but in that sort of range where it just really doesn't take much to, to earn a sweep. So here, JY spying as Papa Danger has decided to uh, enable bug turning swap and purloin off. Uh, generally, the, the meta we've seen develop, especially over the Stomach Cup here, is uh, swap always cut and then bug or purloin uh, in or out, depending on the, the spy's choice. JY, with bug and with Kane, potentially looking to find that walking bug. We'll have to find out. Drink in hand on Kane's side, but the ambassador is right next to us. Will JY look for a chaos bug in three, two, one, playing it? Resists the allure of the chaos bug. Probably a wise decision here. No one else near the ambassador on the far right side there. We attempt the uh, the seduce at the bar, but unfortunately it doesn't connect. And not only that, committing a hard tell uh, by not sipping immediately after arriving at bar, and we miss the pad as well. JY's spy is feeling slightly sloppy tonight, but so far unpunished. I find most seductions in bars are rather sloppy, yes, and <laughs> fail just about as often. 
<laughs> well, JY will take the drink. A fairly innocent action here on any three or five pub, as Perloin is not a mission that Turnip Boy has to watch for. And if you know Turnip Boy uh, and his successes, you'll know that pub is one map that he thrives on, specifically thriving on finding the delegated Purloiner, another reason for JY to remove that mission. However though, uh, at this pub, seduction target is not keen, and JY has been once more left to dry. Yeah, this is one player you might want to strongly consider leaving that bug on and turning Purloin off. And the red. You can make a case for either one. Although I think we did both see him lose just once to a delegated Purloin when it was delegated to a cast member. Mm, yeah, no, I remember that as well. Yep, that was uh, Frosty, I believe, who uh, was able to find... No, it wasn't. It just wasn't Frosty. That's a, a complete lie. But regardless, <laughs> it was uh, pretty impressive stuff. Here we go. JY finds uh, an early contact and potentially at this point it's actually foregoing Seduce as a mission as he hasn't started it. We walk right past the ambassador with the briefcase in hand, which is another form of non-AI movement. How much can JY get away with without Turnip Boy seeing it? Yeah, you literally should never be crossing the ambassador's path, going the opposite way, holding the briefcase. I don't think that ever would take place. JY, fingerprint, contact, and now for the fourth time, we step into a situation to flirt with our seduction target. We'll have to see if he does indeed start up that mission. At a minute and three seconds, you really don't have much time to convert that. Uh, however, we do look over towards the right-hand statue where the ambassador has just picked it up. Unfortunately, though, and as JY frustratedly shows us, Pearls smudges the print. Well, that could be better in the long run if he's enough of a suspect. Certainly, Pearls now has a fingerprint from the sniper's perspective and an inspect. Yeah, no, that's true. Here we go. Pearl's now picking up the briefcase. Meaning wow. that she has two fingerprints. JY attempting the fingerprint himself does fail. It gets the inspect. We've got 34% on the flirt, but we don't really have enough time to convert it. At this point, we're waiting for Turnip Boy to make a shot. 14 seconds left on the clock. Bug is still enabled, so we could potentially crash into our ambassador, and indeed we go for it. There's the arm stuck in, and there's the safety off on JY. Turn it boy all over that. Well, what's really interesting is that Pearls, who had, as you say, has two fingerprints, has the inspect, was in conversation with an SDA during the banana bread too. She could have been done. Maybe just a little too aggressive. Uh, at that point, Turnip Boy not willing to assume that JY would do that but either missed one of the prints or was skeptical of the timing or something else. My guess is just a little too focused on Morgan there uh, based on that kind of awkward uh, entry into that pad trying to rush that fingerprint before someone else got rid of the smudge diversion. Yeah, and JY, uh, Turner Boy actually in chat says that he didn't have a good indication of who had real contacts for that game. Mm. Uh, and so I guess at that point, everyone who's not low lit uh, potentially could be done. And when you have two people you feel completing at the same time and you don't know who to shoot on, on any three or five pub, uh, either you flip a coin quickly or you just wait it out and see what happens. Uh, the latter seeming to be the better option in this very scenario. Now Turnip Boy spying as Irish looking to try and bounce back into this series. And uh, this time we do see Bug cut with Purloin making its way onto the table. We'll have to see if Turnip Boy does decide to uh, to use that hardtail. Counting us in in three, two, one, playing it. We said a couple games ago, you want the sniper to be on the ball sometimes. This was actually one of those games. If he were confident that Pearls could be done, maybe that shot comes off. If you're not confident, maybe you're more likely to hold on anyone in particular, forcing a crash bug late. That's a highlight over to Turnip Boy immediately as he wow. sits into the conversation, potentially because no one talked. Let me see. Uh, no, the highlight comes right after a talk animation ends. Uh, Red Dress leaves in the middle of a talk animation, and Turnip Boy is highlight maybe less than one second after. Oh, so Very potentially assuming Red Flirt, even. We'll have to I find so. out how that does affect us, of course. As we know, 
Red dress is not the seduction target, but look what conversation she's standing in. The one with the seduction target. If Turnip Boy wants to start up the seduce, then he has to walk back over towards her. Oh, thankfully, Swollen does leave. Gives Turnip Boy a, uh, a potential to seduce without uh, raising any suspicion. Yeah, it could have led to one of those unfortunate scenarios where you get shot for the wrong reason. Um, but oh, from the sniper's no. perspective, it makes perfect sense. From the sniper's perspective, that missed pad looked terrible. If JY's already highlight you, then potentially it's the worst. Here comes a real in contact. The White test, Turner Boy talking through it. A couple of lowlights, in fact, lots of lowlights available. Two highlights moved on down and a shot immediately onto Turnip Boy. Says to me that the missed pad was seen. And let's go back and have a look at that uh, highlight and see exactly how it did occur. Yeah, you're right. It does look pretty much exactly like a red flirt. And, you know, that's a reasonable thing. JY is the kind of player who will occasionally try to pair flirts, especially on a map variant like this, 3-5 where some people are going to conceivably complete missions or seem like they could have. So flirt pairing is one way to get a leg up on that. Yeah, flirt pairing, potentially just uh, that. But then the, the missed pad as he enters conversation, I think was the, uh, was the bullet necessary to shoot Turnip Boy. JY doesn't shoot immediately for it. Has been bitten uh, for strange pathing on pub. I recall my series against JY. Uh, back in the group stages, shot an AI for an awkward entry into a conversation. Uh, so potentially thinking back to that uh, and not wanting to shoot for it, but with the contact, the white test, and uh, potentially convinced of an early flirt or whatever it may be, takes the shot and keeps his lead alive. Three to one. As we head over to library now, Turnip Boy slowly uh, losing his grip on the series, but library a map where you can make dreams happen is going to be JY. Uh, playing as plain twin. We'll have to see what he has on offer in three, two, one, playing it. Yeah, sometimes you'll miss a pad and the sniper won't be sure they saw it, but that was front and center on a map in a mode where there aren't that many people vying for your attention to begin with. If ever a missed pad were going to be seen, it was that one. JY spying and Irish, the seduction target. We chase her over to the left busk of Elizabeth Fry, I believe, isn't it? It is. I believe so. Yeah. And, uh, I, you couldn't see, but I was I was shaking my head the whole time. That decision to go to the ST, the odds that she's going to stay there long enough are just so small in that scenario. Especially without a drink in hand. At least at yes. a window pad uh, and a, a drink at hand, you're giving yourself options that a action may be preferred in the by the AI, but when there is no drink, and that is not a window pad, there are going to be none. JY, early contact. Four lowlights taken by Turnip Boy and JY is out of the conversation, chasing Irish across the map. Yeah, it makes a little more sense this time, certainly, but a lot of movement early for modest progress. We'll have to find out exactly how JY is planning on winning this game. Thankfully for us, a green test on the flirt means they're up to 51% and puts us in a much more viable position. Uh, with 2 minutes and 43 seconds on the clock, we really have almost all the time in the world on library, depending on how fast you want to move. Uh, but currently, JY is pretty content to sit in this conversation in time of flirt. Yeah, with the contact already done and the chance of getting a timer flirt to finish the mission once and for all, always very tempting to just kind of, especially when the seductor target spurned you once before and now twice. Here comes Toby with a offer of a drink. We start talking and decide to decline it. An Irish, uh, I guess, increasing distance between us means that we can go finish that flirt. Uh, and in a position where the sniper doesn't really have uh, as much vision on us as well. Uh, but Jay White not acting to do that. Instead, we're crossing the map once more over towards the classical time ad window, potentially wanting to make up some lost time. Yeah, and this is the time to do it. I think I mentioned on an earlier cast that I really admire when a spy can see the trajectory <laughs> of the game and realize, oh no, and realize that they're going to be low on time even though they're not yet. Wow, okay. There's two things to talk uh, about there, track. Yeah. Failed bug <laughs> and synchronized briefcase picking up. Not just synchronized, uh, synchronized in appearance as well. Uh, the other twin, the one blocking them. Very funny. Here comes the time ad. We definitely need to make up time now. 45 seconds added to both clocks. Turnip Boy swiftly moving around the map, but no low lights coming off. 
potentially not seeing the time ad in action. We get a fingerprint at the yellow book. We rush over towards Irish, our seduction target, to try and finish this mission. Yeah, so whipping back and forth makes the time ad and the bug, it looks like. Oh, yeah, the bug as well, as he entered into the, uh, the yellow bookshop, I assume. Someone in chat pointing out, well, you shouldn't have picked the slower twin. <laughs> well, yeah, one of them has a little extra weight from uh, from the bling, I guess, but this one should be faster then, in theory. Plain twin, as many people say, is the better twin. There's a big, a big belief of this. I know that for sure. And <laughs> a lot of people tend to uh, to highlight one twin and, and neutralize the other, and hold suspicion for both. But one is kind of more suspicious than the other. Currently, JY is neutraled throwing that yellow book into the green bookshelf we are in a fantastic position now to finish this game all we require is a fingerprint and turnip boy watching the ambassador very closely what's interesting is that turnip boy seems to be alternating which hard tell they're camping at any given moment and always guessing wrong so far one second not looking at the ambassador misses the bug later on bugs already happened hard camping the ambassador when the microfilm goes down that toby offering a drink Please take it, says JY, and he does the request for Toby to feed our mouths, comes over, and a drink with a fingerprint is delivered. JY looking for the mission win completion as he takes the drink, starts the fingerprint. Ten seconds to join our clock, and I don't think that there is any way Turnip Boy makes a shot from this point. Four seconds left, and JY will find his second spy win of the night here, increasing his lead to 4-1. Yeah, that's just timing. Uh, timing's probably an element of skill, certainly, but also just an element of randomness. The random n number generator of the sniper whipping back and forth, missing both bug attempts, the one that didn't take and the one that did, and missing the microfilm completely because, ironically enough, they're watching the ambassador who's already been bugged. And now we have to watch this in slow motion. Uh, please feast your eyes on the magnificent synchronized uh, briefcase event here at the 2018 Summer Cup Olympics. <laughs> here, Bling Twin and Plain Twin will be showing off their routine, the shuffle into synchronized briefcase. Synchronized Ooh. briefcase, yes. Fantastic. The newest Olympic sport. <laughs> Fantastic. A technique there. Uh, judges go wild. <laughs> I'm holding up a poster with a number nine on it. You can't see, but that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, though, all jokes aside, uh, Turnip Boy now starting to find himself in a, a very dire position as a spy. Uh, four to one, a series win is six points. Uh, and... and Tenant Boy requires a spy win here to keep alive in the series. Uh, playing as Seek, though, uh, one of the fastest characters, second fastest character in the game, with fairly good animations. We'll have to see if Tenant Boy can pull it off here in 3, 2, 1, playing it. And we are in total agreement that he is the best dressed guest at the party. Absolutely. Just look at that lapel. It is called a lapel, right? Correct? If it's uh I, I think so. You're oh you're definitely asking the wrong guy. <laughs> Do not Chat. know. I'm Tell look, me. I'm pretty sure that's a suit. That's about all I can that's say. That's a tux actually. Formal wear. Oh, see there we go. I don't know anything. Pretty uh pretty certain of that to myself, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe I don't know anything. Either way, that's what a good I question. Know. Is a tux a type of suit? I think it might be a subcategory of suit. That's what I'm gonna say to save face there. Ish, the heretic says Duke's most best dress. No, Duke's just fancy. This is this is class right here. Yes, embodied. Yeah. Understatement, yeah. restraint, like a right. good spy. Well, I'm not sure restraint, <laughs> but definitely uh, some great colors. Regardless, here comes the bug. Oh, JY staring that down. Potentially, JY will now just tunnel in on Seek for the rest of the game. Here comes the real contact as well. A white test. JY again in the red. staring down the spy as it happens, sees the talking animation, picks up some lowlights, and there's the highlight given over to Turnip Boy. That's a really big deal. Some people don't pay attention to who's talking during Banana Bread on most maps, and that's particularly true on Library, where it's just very hard to see. But in this case, as you mentioned, it was completely on camera. Saw it, saw that the talk animation lined up nicely and everything. Hard not to ascribe special significance to that, especially if you already suspect the bug. Yeah, if you suspect the bug and then that contact there 
is 100% confirmation it's happened. And now, mm -hmm. uh, as Sniper, if you are looking to be safe, you will wait this game out. Watch for any other progress in missions. Here's a talk animation. We see that we're leaning to look at Seek this entire time, which tells me that JY is just waiting for a purloin, a microfilm, or even a step into statues. Something you happen to see might not be very significant. And if you're a good sniper, you might not ascribe much significance to it. But if you predict something will happen, if you say, if this person is the spy, I think they'll do this, and then they do it in front of you, that's an incredibly powerful form of confirmation. Here's a step into statues, and it is a side statue, so we won't be completing missions with this, but it might just be enough if Tur JY is confident Turnip Boy is the spy to take the shot. Currently, JY is paying attention to the rest of the map, you know, seeing fingerprints happen, watching people stand next to the ambassador at bookshelves, which may just be enough for Turnip Boy to get away with it. That fingerprint as well gives us a lot of progress that if JY didn't realize a fingerprint was there, could surprise. Yeah, and even if you're pretty good at tracking fingerprints, if you're attuned to them, and JY definitely is compared to your average sniper, this is still library. There's a lot of them floating around sometimes. Let's see how Turnip Boy decides to play out. Two quick side statues sometimes can be more suspicious than a middle statue. Turnip Boy is looking to finish Seduce here. Stepping next to Salmon and the shot right into the rows of Seek will complete this game in favor of JY. I think it all comes back to that decision to bug. Unfortunately, uh, Turnip Boy living on the east coast, I believe, of America and JY situated in Singapore means that you can never trust where the laser is on your screen. Uh, and as we can see, the laser was staring down Turnip Boy. Yeah, and I think the banana bread, uh, a particularly important part. I actually think that's two games where JY has placed an inordinate amount of focus on who could have banana breaded, who maybe was talking during it. The veranda game is ro at Rocker as well. Uh, certainly after the time ad, uh, it seemed like they got a lot of information off that. I think JY is paying more attention to the banana bread and is really burning Turnip Boy for it right now. Yeah, and here comes that contact and quite a few lowlights actually being gifted on the contact. Banana and the bread. highlight was Turnip Boy for it. And this one too. Uh, a highlight. Uh, I'm pretty sure it picks up three, four, maybe even five uh, at that point. But at this point, uh, I think JY was pretty much certain that the only highlight he needed was Seek. I was very happy to uh, continue out that game, waiting for uh, Turnip Boy to put himself in a position to finish. Uh, now into yeah. Courtyard and uh, a very, very dire position indeed. Uh, Turnip Boy requires every win from this point onwards uh, a sniper win on courtyard a spy win and then a, a sniper win on ballroom and a spy win uh to force us into extra time where he will then have to play uh six more games uh to try and take a win over jy almost a, an unthinkable feat of uh a mountain to climb uh, but with sniper on courtyard potentially you can start it off with a win here we'll have to see if he does so Starting it off in three, two, one, playing it. The funny thing is, Turnip Boy doesn't seem to be playing very badly, and JY is playing fairly well, but I, it really feels like a contrast in styles. It feels like JY's style of play is matching up particularly well with Turnip Boys. Really early contact there. Oh, and look at that. A low light wow. immediately for the split. Worse goes to worser. Yes, that is in English. <laughs> It should be, because that's the only word that seems appropriate for that kind of situation. You need to wheel off all these wins in a row, and one of the first things that happens in the resulting game is a low light on the spy. JY, of course, will not know this is a low light. In fact, potentially the laser burning over him as he leaves the conversation could feel like a highlight. And so that does mean that there is an element of comeback here. Or turn it boy it really just depends on how brazen jy wants to play the spy game well he's been completing so far his timeout rate in general in, co in competitions is fairly low and that's actually something i've been impressed by with turn it boy here obviously not doing very well on the sniper side but not taking jumpy shots not taking those sort of shots that you regret as soon as you take them really just holding the shot and jy is completed so i think jy is probably not going to time out here either we pick up our second flirt onto pearls and 85 percent now we can finish that off from anywhere in range for a seduce the ambassador walking past us but we don't go for the bug it would have been 
an opportunity potentially for Turnip Boy to find a shot. JY is eyeing up the statues here. Potentially, nope, we're looking like we might cycle back around to Pearls and finish the flirt off. Uh, that is not quite the optimal path for an AI to take, and it is one of the longest paths you'll ever see on Courtyard uh, without being any kind of tell, I think. Yeah, one thing that potentially, uh, if you're looking to change up your spy sniper game, is uh, start noticing super short paths and then even super long paths as well. Uh, ones that don't seem efficient. AIs tend to be fairly efficient in their pathing. Uh, Toby offering a drink here, and we are going to reject it. One thing that always uh, is fairly surprising, I suppose, is how the brain will trick us when you see a, a low light purloin the guest list. Uh, instead of kind of looking for the fade, you just assume it may be green. But look at this, JY starting up a fake contact, standing next to the, the red. This is a cover to bug you would feel. There it goes, standing bug, but it fails. JY leaves the conversation. Did Turnip Boy see it? Oh, we missed the statue pad, but we're still low lit. I just don't think it matters at this point. Inspects coming off, potentially a swap as well. You'd have to swap, surely, if you're looking to try mission complete on Courtyard. And there it is. The swap comes through on the last animation cycle. Turnip Boy not looking for it. Five seconds on the clock. And JY will nail the final nail into the coffin of this series, taking the spy win on Courtyard and taking a 6-1 victory over Turnip Boy. Yeah. And this is one thing where I think experience matters a little bit more. Turnip Boy obviously has a lot of very fine skills, and a lot of people are going to miss things that low lights do. But one thing I've noticed as I played more and more is that the best of the best have a way of pulling those games back when the low lights do something in front of them like that. There was a bug attempt that didn't take, there was a missed pad going into statues late, and then there was a white swap as well. Uh, I've missed all those things before, even from highlights, let alone low lights. But as players progress, I find they get better and better at kind of picking up those things in the periphery. I think, for example, you know, if you do that against someone like Canadian Bacon or Crazy Kaylee, who are playing this Saturday, by the way, um, for the finals, I think they're going to shoot you for that, even as a low light. I think they're yeah. going to notice that late in the match. I think that's the kind of thing that you just get good at over time. You find a way to sort of devote a little bit of attention, just a little bit to your low lights without putting too much of a cognitive load from it. Yeah, no, something I'm certainly looking to develop in my own sniper game is uh, to not trust every low light I give out. Uh, I suppose trying to, to make my low lights a little bit more behavioral or rewarding certain paths potentially. But knowing, you know, uh, a capable spy could complete such thing and so to, to watch the low light as well. But when it is a low light for what you think is a 100% thing, a, a contact outside of conversation it's a very very nice split the kind of split you would assume that jy was what just essentially assuming he would hit green uh and if he didn't he would have coughed his way out um and yeah uh, the the low light was rewarded and at that point you 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 pretty much are assuming 100 percent uh so commiserations to uh to um turnip boy as he has uh has um yeah no flush yeah. if you if you need to talk then then talk if it is uh at importance of course you will be on stream um <laughs> <laughs> that's fine well while you're looking into that certainly uh no shame here from turnip boy i think he actually played very fairly strong i think jy's again his style i think just matched up so well he i think he punished turnip boy for the kind of things most snipers don't punish for things like banana breads which most of the time you figure and this is true against most snipers when you do the banana bread you're trading low lights basically right that's what you're doing and maybe they'll shoot you for it if they're desperate in this case jy i think placing more emphasis on it uh, maybe not something Turnip Boy is quite as used to seeing uh, and just facing a strong opponent in general. But I think the nice thing is that Turnip Boy was not taking those jumpy shots. He was making JY complete missions. It just so happens that he did. Yeah, absolutely. And with that victory there, you can see that uh, JY uh, has taken um, the victory and moved on in to the quarterfinals where he will play against yeesh um and we have a pretty important announcement actually uh just uh just coming in it's in my ear no uh producers <laughs> tell me i have to tell you this uh it seems like uh unfortunately we've had a dropout 
um, in the uh, in the tournament. For those who were wondering why uh, Frosty and Pox uh, will not be broadcasted tonight, it's uh, unfortunately Frosty has dropped out of the the competition uh, overall. Um, and uh, as to uh, to to keep things in the, the spirit of Summer Cup, uh, a replacement has been uh, attributed. Uh, it seems a bear raw will step in to um it to his place as the highest scoring non qualifier of the uh group stages um a bear raw takes his place and will be playing pox in a round of sixteen matchup uh later on i suppose uh, as soon as possible so uh unfortunate to see frosty go really a fresh of a fresh of a breath of fresh air at some of his you know little nuanced spy moves uh coming through um and a huge upset in in group e especially uh taking first place there but uh welcome a bear raw uh i'm assuming you you know this yeah rematch with pox uh let's talk about that actually uh, when did you play? You played Pox in week two of the group stages. A match that went, I believe, uh, five to three. Very close. And so looking forward to, to seeing the results of that matchup uh, later on in the week. Yeah, and uh, the winner of that matchup will be facing the winner of the one we're about to cast as well. But before we get into that, I should point out that this means JY, with that victory, that definitive victory, will face defending champion Yeesh in the round of eight. Yes. That is a big one. Those two players, you uh, put out a number of forms for people to make their community predictions. um, And they were all over the map because you can make a case for so many people in this competition right now. But fair to say... Yeesh and JY among the more frequently chosen to win. Very true. Yep, very true. Uh, and uh, let me just update my graphic as I do a, a slight transition and then I go mm-hmm. back again. <laughs> you can now uh, hopefully see on your screen uh, a bear raw versus box. Yeah, perfect. I did it. I'm so good at this. There it is. Uh, so good. But yeah, let's it's talk easy. about it. So uh, Yeesh versus JY. Uh, well, we, we saw Yeesh take on Artoriax. Uh, the interesting thing, I guess, about this matchup is, is that Artoriax in the bronze division of the Spy Party Competitive League this year um, placed, I believe, fifth, I want to say. Maybe it was fourth. It was fourth, yep, because Seabot yep, fourth, yeah. was, uh, was AFK. Um, JY finished second... Uh, up in bronze, had a really good season, but unfortunately wasn't able to close out a victory over Nampholus. Um The bronze championship match finishing 8-8, which was a win for Nampholus. Uh Now JY plays, uh, I want to say, um, turn out eight in a silver promotion match. Mm-hmm. Um We'll have to see how that one goes. You know, very exciting stuff, I suppose, for the um, for the uh, SEL promotion. But uh, Yeesh, uh, a player with so much Spy Party competitive experience, uh, you know, ranked silver as far as SEL is concerned, but has had a huge break. Potentially could have won silver, uh, though that was a pretty stacked division if he was to have been able to play this year. Um, and as champion, uh, potentially the... One of the, the, the favorites to, to win this tournament outright. Uh, that's a really fun quarterfinal ahead of us. Yeah, that's going to bust a lot of these brackets, that matchup, because a lot of people are going one way or the other on those two. 